Thank you so much for joining me today as we kind of dive into a tutorial for a cemetery saddle. One of the things I did want to chat with you about um, before you go and start your project is some of the things that you might want to consider. That being the type of greens that you want to put into your piece. Now this I got at Hobby Lobby. It was $12 but I got it 50% off so that would be $6 and if you notice the um, feather like fern and then it's got some dark shades of green and it also has the lighter shades of green so I really like that. I also a lot of times use something like this that I got from Michaels. I don't know if it says um, what it's called. It says just a stem. But these I've used in some of my other tutorials and you can actually separate them out rather easily um, stem by stem. And I love how that looks against the fern. I also picked this up at Michael's. I use this all the time. In fact, they have some that um, has a pink tip, which is really beautiful. But see how it cascades? This piece was 40% off, $13. And then, of course, you end up getting so much out of this because you cut it apart and you stick it in. But what I love about this particular green is the way that it cascades down over the headstone. It just gives the piece a real nice soft look. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as we get into the project. But I've also used this fern, really lightweight, airy fern. This gives a beautiful texture to your piece and just adds another element uh, something a little different as far as greens go. And then I love to put in some variegated ivy. This one's got really small, soft tendrils that, again, would just look beautiful, cascading down um, against the headstone. And I love the pop of the white and the green together. I also typically use some larger ivy because, again, I think this just adds another different element different shape leaf. This is really smooth and it's glossy. And then it does have some of these little spikes, curly little spikes that I love. So those are some of the different types of greens. I mean, you could do it all one type of green. I just think it adds so much more interest if you use several. And then the flowers that I used in this particular piece, I just got one rose bush at Hobby Lobby. Um, $12, so I paid $6 for them. And then you'll see as we get into the project, I just cut them. I start by cutting them as long as I can, and then I remove the bottom set of leaves off of the stem. But I'll, I'll also talk about that in a um, couple minutes. The one thing that you are going to need, you're going to want to pick up a saddle, and they do sell these at Hobby Lobby. They do have some that are just the one clamp, but I, I really like the double. Just It's more secure um, to put on the headstone. And then you're going to need some dry floral foam. Now for me, because I use so much of this, it's cheaper to just buy one big piece and cut that. But you could, if you wanted to, if you're only going to make one, say you make one saddle, you could even go to the dollar store and get some dry foam. So you're going to need your roses, um, different types of greens, your cemetery saddle itself, and then some dry foam. You're going to need some zip ties. You'll need some wire cutters and then some scissors. And you'll also want a couple different types of ribbon. And as we progress into the project, I'll share more with you about that. But um, let me get things cleaned up here, and I'll get all my branches cut, and we'll get started. Okay, so to save us some time during the video, I went ahead and I cut my floral foam to me uh, fit the size of the saddle. And I used two different zip ties, just so you could see. I actually zip tied the floral foam right to the saddle. And of course, all of this is gonna be covered up. It's not even gonna show. So now I'm gonna go and snip 
these ends. I've also gone ahead and I have cut all of my stems. I've left them as long as I can and then I've separated them by style and also if you notice this fern bush it had the dark, it had the medium and then it had some light. So I've even separated those colors because my thought and how I typically do this I'm going to put darker down towards the bottom and then progressively get to lighter. I also snipped off some of these ferns as well as these ferns and I've actually um, put a pick in them just because of the way that this particular stem reacts sometimes going into the floral foam. Now typically when you use dry floral foam, not wet, dry, uh, you do not have to glue it. However, if you want to glue it, you should go ahead and do that. Given that this piece is going to be outside in the wind, you know, that would just be reassurance that it's not, the pieces are not going to come out, that they are going to stay in. Now what I'm going to go ahead and get started with is my fern and I like to really bend it, make it look very natural. I'm going to actually just put one here in the corner and then another one on the other corner. I'm going to start in our corners first. I'm going to turn it. Do one in this corner and another one in this corner. One thing that I didn't say about the florals that I want to make sure I mention, because this is going outside, you want to try to pick a floral that would be more weather resistant. You can't tell from the camera, but this is, it's got more of a plastic feel than some of the other pieces that I use. And also given your budget, um, you might not want to put a lot of money into a higher quality floral seeing that this is just going to be left outside. But again, um, you're making this, you know, for a loved one or someone special. So the way that you design it, it could be so unique and custom made for that person, given their favorite flower, style. And now I'm just simply going to add one to the middle of this side. I'm going to flip it around and add another darker one to the middle of this side. Okay, so this is what we have so far. We have one in each corner and then we have one in each middle. Now I'm choosing, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use a different type of ivy. I'm going to use this heavier ivy piece. And I'm going to use that um, in the center here. And I'm, I'm pushing that way in to the floral foam, okay? And I'm going to do the same on this side. Because I want to make sure that this stays in. Now right here I'm not going to use that same type of ivy. I want to stagger with something else. So I think I'm going to use, let me see if I have some, some fern here just to give it a little bit of interest. So right here in the center I'm going to put some fern and then across from it I'm going to put some fern. We'll call this a cascading fern, okay? We're going to put some more here. And then we're going to do one more piece here. Now I'm going to put in some of this other ivy. And I'm actually going in between the first fern and that last cascading ivy that I just put in. And I'm pushing it way in. And this is just building up our base, okay? And then directly across from it, I'm going to do the same thing. Down here, I'm going to do the same thing. And 
then over here, I'm going to do the very same thing. Okay. Now I'm going to bring in some of my variegated ivy. This is nice and long. See how pretty that is? Now how I typically do this is I put all my greens in and then I start to put in some of my florals. But I work with my greens first. I love the way this small tendrils. Now I will probably save a smaller piece like this for up at the top. So I want to choose something that's a little bit longer. This one's nice and long. So I'm going to pick this one. I want to make sure I have a couple of long ones. Yeah, this is nice and long and I've got one other. You'll see how pretty this looks when it's... Now I'm putting this at an angle because I don't want it exactly the same as the other one. And what's going to happen as I continue to layer the greens, I'm actually going to feed it in so that it just kind of all meshes together. It doesn't, doesn't look so set. Turn it around. Now this side, I'm only going to do, I'm doing the opposite of what I did on the other side. I'm only going to do one long piece of ivy and I'm going to put it in the center. Okay, now I'm going to start with some of this other larger fern, uh, ivy, I'm sorry, and I'm going to put in a couple of pieces. This one's a little bit longer. I think I'm going to save that for the top. Where's that other? Put these aside. If you get working and you find some pieces that you think would be really good for the top, you might want to just put them aside. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how I chose um, how I chose the different links for the ivy. I'll show you when I cut some more cascading. I purposely didn't cut everything so that I could show you. Okay, so now I'm beginning to start at the top. The top, I'm starting to build up and start to cover some of that. I'm going to go with one more piece of this solid ivy over here in the center. Again, just the way that I like to design, I want it to look really, really natural. I don't want it to look set. Now I'm going to start to come in with some of this medium color fern. I'm bending it and I'm going to come in up here. Now if you notice, here's this one, here's this one, here's another one. So I'm staggering those ferns so that I don't have right in a row, okay? So I'm offsetting it a little bit. Here's the next one. I'm going to do the same thing on that corner. Offset it a little bit. It just helps me if I turn it around. I've got to get some of these greens out of the way so that you guys can see. So now I don't want it exactly, exactly here where this one is. I want it offset a little bit. So I'm going to put it in here.
I'm going to do the same thing on the other end. Offset it just a little bit so it's a little different. This one actually I think I'm going to go right in the middle. First with that one. And then I'm going to offset it with this over here right in the middle. And then we're going to do one more on the other side. Okay, so this is what we're working on so far. We're just creating a base. And I know we can see the, the floral foam, but we're not going to worry about that right now because when we're done, trust me, we're, you won't. Okay? Now, I've decided, not that there is a front, but um, the client obviously will put it on the top of the headstone, and I'm assuming because she wants a bow in it. So I'm going to put the bow in the center that this probably would be the front because it's got the two variegated tendrils of ivy and this one if you notice on this side just has the one but she can choose to do whichever she wants to do but for, for me in this for the sake of designing I'm going to say that this one here is the front so I'm just going to continue to keep on building let's choose a different type um, let's go with some more of this Put another one over here. Okay, I'm going to pause the video for a moment while I cut up some more stems. Okay, so we're continuing to add in different stems alternating them as we place them in. Again, just to add more interest and we're working, we're trying to work from dark to light. If, if the particular greenery that you have has that in it where the, some are darker than others, I would definitely continue to work dark to light. Now I want to go ahead and add in this air fern. I haven't even used this yet, but it is just so light. It gives the piece a whole different look. So I'm going to go ahead and place one of those in.
I'm just working my way around the piece again. Some of these ends are a little bit more durable than others, so I don't have to use a pick, but some of them aren't as durable. I want to make sure that they really get caught. One more to go here. This one's good. Hopefully you can start to see how we're building up our foundation. We're bringing it to the center. We're working all the way around and then we're bringing it to the center. Changing out the greenery as we go. Okay, now I don't have any of this on this side, so I'm going to put a piece of that in there. Just have to figure where I want it. This one's rather short. Put that on that side. The other thing that's great about um, this project is if you put them in and then glue them afterwards, you can be sure about where you're placing them to make sure that you like the placement. Now I want some more of our cascading vine. And I waited to cut this because I wanted to show you. There's several different places on this stem where you could cut pieces. Something like this would be the perfect length. That's why, you know, the price of this, you think $13, but you can get so much out of one of these. And what I love about this is you can decide how long you want the stems. So now again, we're just going to continue going around and filling in. You could very easily, if you decided that you know, your budget doesn't allow for you to do expensive stems, you could totally go to the dollar store and find, they have some beautiful florals and some ferns. And you could make this work with those. I'm really hoping that someone that watches this video maybe would even consider doing this with your kids for a grandparent, another loved one, and let them create a piece. I mean, what a sense of accomplishment, and, and it would mean so much when you are able to go to the graveside with your kids and they're able to put something that they made. Even for yourself, the sense of accomplishment, knowing that you made something special and custom for your loved one. Whoops, that one came out. That's not good. I'll be doing a few more cemetery tutorials because I've got um, some orders coming up in a few, a few weeks for several graves. So I'll be working on some container drop-ins. And what that is simply is you just make an arrangement that you just put right into the urn and then you can pull it out seasonally. So it's not a permanent um, fixture in the urn. So if, if that's something that you're, you know, looking at having to do, um, check back on our channel. We'll be sharing that with you in the future. I'm 
Just going to do a little bit more of this cascading fern around. The whole piece. Got one more in here. We'll do one more over here. I think I want one more right in there. It's really too heavy, so I think I'm gonna cut that down a little bit. Okay, so let me hold this up for you so you can kind of get an idea of what it's looking like. The variety, the different tones of green that we have, cascading fern, and then we have this beautiful fern. We've got some ivy. We've got some variegated ivy. You can just see how it's all coming together. So what I'm going to do is from here on in, I'm just going to keep working the same process and I will come back when we're ready to add in the flowers. I decided to turn the camera on a little bit earlier because I did want to mention one thing. If you notice, I um, put, just for the sake of the video, I've put the saddle up on risers. And if you have like a cake plate or something like that to work on, it actually helps you to be able to see where you might want to place another piece. But we've got to the center, and what I start to do when I get to the center is I actually put the piece, the greenery in straight up at this point. And then we'll go ahead, once we put the flowers in, we'll go ahead and we'll bend them. But I'm also, I'm almost, it's just as if I'm just putting it in straight up. And I'm still making sure that I push it way down into the phloem so that it catches well. Now I'm going to go ahead and fill in the rest of the spots once I've put in my florals. I have some variegated ivy that I've saved for the top, which I think will be beautiful. And I also mentioned that I'm going to make a bow. So we're going to put the bow in as well. Now, what I've chosen for this piece for ribbon, you can get waterproof ribbon, something that they do sell, but this particular client, this is for her mom's um, grave, and she just wanted something very airy and light. So we actually are going with this wired, light pink wired ribbon. One thing that I always make sure that I do um, not only to secure my bow, I always use glue and my picks, but then I use greenery pins to actually hold down the ribbon because you've got to think if it's really windy and you have ribbon tails, they're going to be flopping in the wind. So you just want to take that into consideration as you begin to work on your project. I'm going to be using two different types of ribbon. For this piece, I have the solid, really soft pink and then I have this that has some shimmer to it it's again it's just really soft and I think together they're just gonna look really really pretty 
So I'm going to go ahead and make my bow, and then I'll come back and show you where I'm going to place it in the piece. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I have made my eight loop bow of the two different ribbons. I have a 22 inch tail that I'll show you what I'm going to do with that in a moment. And if you notice, I've left um, this long, still the sheer ribbon. I've left that long, haven't even cut it. I just made my bow with a zip tie. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm applying a little bit of glue to this. Just to, I mean, I don't expect the zip tie to come out, but just to be on the safe side. And then I'm also going to use some greenery pins. Now, if you remember, I said that I'm kind of calling this the front. I'm going to put the bow right in the middle. So I'm just going to actually first I want to cut this. The zip tie, cut it down as close as you can. Get that out of my way. And then I've got um, some greenery pens, little greenery pens, and I'm actually going to use greenery pens to attach the ribbon in a couple of different places. Right into, right into the foam. So I'm going to lay it down here in the middle. Let me get all the green out of the way. Figure out where the middle is. And then I'm going to start to attach it. Now you could use wider ribbon. You could use several different colors. You don't have to do a bow at all. You just have to have more greenery and florals than if you decided not to do a bow. I'm actually going to just put a little bit of glue on my greenery ends because I want to make sure that this stays in the foam. And I'm kind of working out in. I'm starting on the outside with my ribbons and attaching them. And I'm attaching them way down at the base so they still have some fluid movement to them. They're not too tight. I'm going to bring this one way down here. You want to try to push your greenery pins in as far as you can, okay? I'm actually going to turn this. So I want to make sure that I'm getting to the middle. Again, I'm putting glue on the ends of my pins and then I'm sticking it right down through the ribbon, catching that bottom piece of ribbon. Turn it again. Oops, it's hard with this because it's two separate pieces. I had a Lazy Susan, but it's not um, tall enough. I wanted to be able to bring it up so you could really see what I was doing. I think you can start to get the idea of what we're creating here, the airiness of what we're creating. And the Ribbon Works is a great filler. It's pretty to see some of those pink colors tucked down in. It's pretty to see a pop of that.
Okay, now I'm going to turn it towards the front. I've got my ribbon down here on the floor. This piece here and this piece here, I want to come down towards the front. I know that. And what I want to do with that is I just want to make like soft loops that go in the different levels here. Now what I think I'm going to do, my scissors. This one here. So I have this one and I have this one. I make this the same size as this one. And this is great because we have this extra piece and we're going to tuck some pieces of ribbon down in. Really thinking I want this to go off to the side here. Right down in there is pretty. And if you decide you want to wait, I could wait to do the ribbon tendrils till I get the flowers in. That's that's also another option. And if you've got a ribbon that's um, gets a little crazy, just run your fingers through it to straighten it out. I really want this one to come on top of that and cascade down like that in the front. So I think I'm going to put that right there. I will dovetail that when I'm done. And I'm going to do the same with this one. Bring this down into here. And just catch that down there. I have to get some more greenery pins. Okay, so now I'm going to roll up these other two streamers that I have and I'm going to work on the flowers. Roll this one up and tuck this in and roll the other one up and tuck it in. And I'll clean my bench up and we'll get started on the florals. Okay, so now it's time to start to place in our flowers. And there is a couple of things that I want to say about these. Let's see if I can find one that I haven't taken. Um, some of these, the ones I got at Hobby Lobby anyways, I don't know if I said this at the beginning of the video or not, but they actually have another set of leaves. And I typically strip those off. I push this up as far as it will go and then anywhere from three to four inches down from the bud is where I snip it. And I always save these because I can always use them on another project. And then I'm just going to dip them in some glue. And I always try to over deliver with my customers. So I just don't do a dozen roses in this particular saddle. I do 14. And I do that on purpose because I just 
like I said, I want to do above than what's expected. So my typical pattern is three on this side, three on this side, three here, three here, and then one in one. And I'm also going to include, again, just because I want to go above, I'm also going to put in some of this pink, which is really, really pretty. So I've already placed one of my roses here. One other thing that I will say, um, where is the other? You know, there's all kinds of rosebuds that you can buy. If you want something a little more expensive, these are $2.50 a piece. Of course, if you got them 40% off, I mean 50% off when they have their sale, you could put these in, which that would be gorgeous. I mean, Hobby Lobby has so many shades in the rose, roses that you could do. Um, but again, for practicality and for cost, I'm using these, I think I might have told you, they call the Bush for 11, unfortunately. I wish Hobby Lobby did a whole dozen, but they don't. So you'd have to buy two bushes. But for the dozen, um, I'm sorry, for 11, it's $6 when they're 50% off. The other thing that, that kind of bothers me, and I typically go ahead and do it before I put the roses in, some of them um, start to, like, fray. So I always take a scissor and I try to cut off as much of that as I possibly can. There's other times when if I want it closed up a little bit more to look like a, a have a different appearance than some of the other rosebuds, I'll actually glue the petals closed a little bit. So again, or you could, you know, really open it. That's just personal preference. So we're going to make a triangle here. I'm hoping that you can see this. We're going to make a triangle. We've put this one at the bottom in the center and we're going to put some glue on this one. And we're going to put this one over here. And then we're going to put another one over on the other side. And we're lifting up the greenery to try to find the corner. Okay. So that's our first set of three, and I think you can already see how beautiful that's going to be. So, so pretty. So now I'm just going to do the same thing here. I'm going to do two at the top and one at the bottom, turn my piece, do the same thing, and then do the same across the front. Let me do that, and um, I'll come back with all the flowers in, and we'll work on the smaller little florals that we're going to put in, and then just some finishing touches. Okay, so I've done 12, and I thought I'd turn the camera on to do the last two with you. These I saved for the top because of these stems. I just think that they, again, it just adds interest um, because of the tendril that it has on it. And I'm just going to put that one right in here. So I'm going to push it up as far as I can, and I'll cut it. And then I'm going to pull this tendril down a little bit to make it a little bit shorter. Add some glue. And then go ahead and stick it in. You want to make sure that you really get it in there. Good. And then we're going to go ahead and do the same thing. We have another tendril on this side. So hard for me when I'm not looking straight on at the piece. 
Now this, if you want, I really liked, I like the length of it. Now remember we saved, we saved some pieces. Um, I have some of this light fern, which I really love to put over the roses. I just think it softens it so much. And I'll show you what I mean right here in the front. Hopefully the camera will pick this up. And this one. I want to get right down into the base as much as possible. Just bend this. See how that just softens that, that rose? Love that. I love that look. So I'm just going to go and continue to add these wherever um, I have a rose that doesn't have any of that yet. So I have a few more pieces, one more here. And again, it's just going to add more interest to the piece. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to add some of these variegated ivy tendrils that we have. Just again to add some more interest. Making sure that we get way down in that floral foam. See how pretty that is? I'm going to do one on the opposite of that. Need some more glue. Right over in here. Then I think I'm going to do one on each end. So, so pretty. See how that just adds so much? Now, these are the little pink berries that I talked to you about adding. And I would just choose to put those in sporadically here and there, again, just to soften the piece. And I, I really want to make it almost appear like they're peeking out. I, I don't want them to be exact when I place them. And I want it to make it look as if they're almost peeking out from underneath um, the greens. I'll turn this in just a minute so you can see. very subtle but yet it's beautiful 
And then I would just continue to add those all the way around. Now the ribbon tendrils, what I do with that is I would just take pieces of ribbon, figure out, we've got this one here in the front that what I'm gonna do here is roll this up. This ribbon um, curls beautifully. So I would roll this up and try to get it as tight as I could so that would really, we'd really get some ringlets. And then I'd bring some of this down and I might even catch it here or there and just use a um, greenery pin to catch that ribbon as it cascades down through the piece. I think that that is just so pretty. Very natural, and that's what we want. We want it to look very natural looking. And I would do the same thing on this side. I would take a piece of ribbon. I'm not even gonna, not even gonna measure it, but um, maybe 20, 22 inches. Now with my stemming machine, oh, it did work, wow. You can use the pipe cleaner like I've shown you in some of the other videos if you don't have a stemming machine. But then I would just poke this right down in to the foam. And then I would curl this right up. Make it nice and tight. And then I would pull it down and see what it looks like. And then just tuck it. Tuck it in with a greenery pen. I'm gonna put a little glue on this just to make sure that it stays. I'm gonna find the spot where I see the foam and then I'm gonna press it in. Okay, so we have a nice little tendril there. And if you want, like I said, you can dovetail these ends. And you can do as much of the ribbon as you want or as little as you want. Maybe you don't want to do that. Maybe you just want um, the bow on the top. That's completely up to you. So I hope that you have found this tutorial interesting. I hope that maybe it spurred you on to want to give it a try for a loved one that you might have that you want to make a precious gift for. Like I said, it can be custom designed. You can do whatever type of flowers, whatever type of greens. I mean, there's such a great variety. And like I said earlier, it's also a great way to teach your kids to create something for a loved one that's passed on and a way to celebrate their life. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for stopping and visiting our channel. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe uh, button as well as the bell so that you'll get notifications of some other tutorials that we have coming up. Until next time, when we can get creative together again.